Hi everyone, Paul Tchaikovsky from Pivotal Software here. Just thought I'd do a quick demo video of some of the Spring integration with Kubernetes. So let's uh, switch right across to uh, my code here. I have a pretty simple Spring app. Uh, you can see here I have some configuration settings. So I've got a config setting called message with a default of hello world. And then I've got, a, I've got a fairly basic Spring app that's going to uh, return that message when you go to uh, slash. So let's make sure that that part of it is at least running. So that's it running, and then we should be able to curl it. And so we get this response, hello development, which is not hello world. So if we flip back up to our app and we have a look at our uh, application.yaml, you can see that we have different profiles set up. And if you're in the development profile, uh, you get this hello development response. Um, you can see also have a Kubernetes profile. And I have some Kubernetes manifests here. And so I have this deployment. It's gonna deploy a fairly simple uh, Spring app. Um, here is my image it's going to deploy. Uh, it's going to list the ports. I've got some actuators for health and info on a different port. Uh, I'm doing some resource limitations and I'm using the health actuator for aliveness and readiness probe. And then I have a service here that is going to uh, expose that uh, via a node port. So let's go ahead and, and run it. So we're going to do a maven install to make sure we've got a current version of my binary and then a docker build. Uh, that will uh, copy that into a docker file. Uh, so that's now running in docker. I could do a docker run, but I'm interested in showing you this running in Kubernetes. And so I can do uh, a Let me just show you. I've got Kubernetes running. Uh, this is just running Minikube. Uh, so I can do kubectl apply dash f deploy and deploy that. The, and, and that's deployed my application. So I can look at my logs for this app, um, for the pod that's running, and we can watch it start up. All right, that is my app running. Uh, so I should be able to go to another console. Uh, do a mini cube, oh, mini cube service list. And so this is just mini cube showing me what services are listening, and it let me lets me get a URL for my node port, uh, so I can run curl that. That did not work. Oh, actually, you know what? I know what's going on here. I, uh, I think in my pom.xml. To, yeah, I need to enable this actuator here. Um, but I want to leave this bit uh, not running right now. And so we're going to redo that Docker build. So I, I'd accidentally commented out the actuators. Uh, and so that's why the actuator wasn't listening for health. Um, so now I can. Uh, now, because I've got a deployment here, I can actually just delete my pod. Uh, and the deployment will see that the pod's missing and it will recreate it. And it should use the new image. So uh, let's see how that works. So it's actually an interesting uh, demonstration of some of the things that Kubernetes will do. Um, so let's see we get pods. All right, so we're running it again. Uh, so this is just watching the logs in my Kubernetes pod for the application. Okay, we've got two endpoints. So we've got the endpoint on uh, for the actuator now. Uh, so we should be able to uh, run that curl. No. <laughs> Wow, 
Okay, I'm clearly doing something very wrong here. Um, port forward. Hello world. 80. Let's just try this code. Closed. Wow. So that's because my liveness check has killed it again. Um, give it a second. Okay. All right. So that is. So I've got the actuator running, but now it's on the it's on the wrong port. So I want it on a non uh, on a different port, so that it's not actually exposed to the outside world. Uh, so let's go back to our source and have a look at our tails here. So I'm not sure why that didn't pick that up from Bootstrap, but yeah, well let's move it back up to here. Um, I could also try setting that as an environment variable, um, but we'll see how we go here first. So again, we have to uh, install and build this. Happens pretty quickly. And again, we can delete that pod. So there's a new version of the pod running. Logs. All right, that looks better. So Tomcat started on two ports now, so it is on the 8081 port. So we should see our pod uh, up and running. It's still not showing as ready, um, but I'm sure it will in a second. There we go. So with a few seconds to spare, it is up and running. You can see ready now is one of one. Uh, so we can have a look at our uh, service list. That's still the same port. Okay, so there we go. So that is our application running in Kubernetes. Uh, but there's no actual Kubernetes integration happening right now. And so we're gonna go ahead and turn on some Kubernetes integration. Uh, specifically, we're going to use the um, Spring Cloud Starter Kubernetes config. And this will allow Spring to use Kubernetes uh, config maps and secrets as a config source. So really all we need to do is uh, uncomment uh, that. Uh, and then in our bootstrap.yaml, you can see we have some stuff here. Clearly it was being ignored earlier because we didn't have the modules enabled, um, but now we have this enabled. So config enabled true, uh, reload enabled true, uh, and then the mode and strategy for reloads. So that will actually tell our application to watch the config map and if the config map change, it should refresh uh, our application so that it uses the new config setting. So uh, let's have a look at and you also need this uh, endpoint restart enabled, uh, which I learned the hard way. Um, obviously, it needs to know how to restart your app and refresh your app. And let's roll back up to our deployment uh, stuff here. So there's a few things we now need. Uh, we need some role-based authentication to allow our Kubernetes user to uh, effectively uh, list, read, our resources. So all I really need for this is config maps and secrets. Um, but if I wanted to do service discovery, I would also want to be able to look at services, pods, endpoints. So that's all there. Um, so that's a role. And then I'm binding that role uh, to the default user in my namespace. And so anything running with the default user will be able to uh, do these actions against these Kubernetes resources. Uh, and then we have the config map 
uh, which is here. Um, and it's just got that uh, key, value, key value pair message, uh, hello world. Uh, so when we rebuild and deploy this, uh, our message should change from hello development to hello world. And so let's try that out. So we delete that pod again, the deployment will kick it back up. Um, and we didn't change anything else in the manifest, so it should work. Um, we'd already deployed the config map um, when I did the kubectl apply earlier. It just wasn't using it. Uh, so now let's look at our logs and see what has changed. So as soon as it comes up now, you should see it look for config maps and load some data from config maps. And you can see right there, it's done that. Uh, and you can actually see the contents of my config map right there. And so it's loaded that up and it's used that. So there's our endpoints and it started running in 48 seconds. So again, a little bit of time to spare. Uh, let's have a look at, it. looks like it's running. Uh, and we should recall it. And you can see there it's saying, hello world. Um, so that's coming from our config map which we can just display it here. Again, uh, in the data for it, we've got the message, hello world. Um, so let's have a look what happens when we change it. So we'll just edit it live, hello. Uh, we'll just change our message. Hello world, I love you. Uh, and then we save that. And then we run curl again and boom. Hello world, I love you. So our application has clearly seen that change and has refreshed. And if we look at our logs here, um, you can see uh, event-based configuration change detector, detected change in config maps, uh, reloading user strategy refresh. Uh, and so that's refreshed our application. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so that's showing you some very basic uh, Kubernetes integration um, that allows you to change configuration settings uh, in Kubernetes uh, using config maps, uh, which is a very useful thing. Um, let's quickly go back to our config map. So you can see here's our config map. Now, you can do this a number of ways. If you just have one or two keys, you can just put the key value pairs here. If you have kind of a more complicated um, config map, uh, you can actually pass it a like an application.yaml or application.properties file. So I could do this application.yaml. And if we had more config settings, um, there's no potato, bacon, uh, whatever, right? Um, I'm just kind of showing you that you can have more than one setting. You can kind of have it nested out. Um, basically, you can build an entire application.yaml file or application.properties file. Uh, and again, I can, uh, I should be able to just apply this. Uh, and so here we see now this property set setting has changed and it's actually saying uh, the single property with name application.yaml will be treated as a yaml file uh, and then you can see here it's loading my keys and values so I've got my message hello world but I also have my other two properties I just randomly created, test and bacon. Um, so again, I should be able to curl. And I get my hello world is from application.yaml. So that's showing you that you can obviously make a much more complicated um, application.yaml or application properties file uh, to pump into uh, your application via Kubernetes. Uh, and 
I think that's all I really wanted to show you today. Uh, so hopefully uh, you enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully you uh, got something out of when I was actually uh, messing up and had to go and fix things. And uh, thanks for watching.